Hello, good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Playing With Junk. Uh, I have already made a video with my Fawag master clock here. And uh, the last time when I opened the case I must have touched somehow, somewhere, some pots or some uh, adjustments. So the result was that this clock was going uh, 10 minutes too slow per day, which is absolutely not acceptable. Not for a clock like that or for any clock, because even the cheapest mechanical clocks would be more precise. So, oops, let's remove the cover. I have already unscrewed it, just in case you are asking why this is going so quickly. Um, as I explained in the last video, we have here underneath this uh, styrofoam cover, it's a, uh, it is a crystal oven uh, that is heated to about 50 degrees, degrees centigrade. Uh, the heating adjustment is this pot here. Now I won't touch it because I don't want to unadjust it again. So let's zoom in a little bit. That's the potentiometer for the temperature. That's the course setting for the crystal oscillator. This uh, is a variable uh, capacitor. And here is a small variable capacitor for the fine tuning, which is accessible through the front panel, like that. A little bit tricky to reach because there is no guide for, uh, for the screwdriver. And then the upper hole here is just a two and a half millimeter uh, jack plug that connects directly to the oscillator signal. Where is my plug? Here it is. It is something like that. Uh, the crazy thing here, the signal is on the sleeve and the ground is on the tip. I don't know why they did it that way. It's a little bit crazy, but well, it was the 1970s and the 1970s have been crazy. Okay, let's hook up the oscilloscope. I marked the signal with the red. Uh, heat shrink tube and that's the signal that comes from that uh, connection uh, it's not a sine wave it's not a, a square wave but that doesn't matter because the frequency is important and not the waveform and as you can see we have 100 kilohertz but it's a little bit tricky to read out because I have to, s to set the cursor manually here on this oscilloscope. It doesn't have an automatic peak detect measurement stuff. It's, it just has a cursor. So I'm somewhere about 100 kilohertz, which is of course the frequency we should have here. But the question is now how precise is it? And one of the most precise uh, frequency references would be a rubidium oscillator. Of course there are more precise oscillators but uh, that's simply something I can't afford. A rubidium oscillator is something you can find on eBay for about $150 and that's exactly what's inside this box. Now the box itself 
is, or better, it was an old power supply from a DEC Alpha server, a GS series server, a very big one, and uh, that box was lying around. We didn't use it, so I thought it would be a nice case for my oscillator. Let's have a look inside. I have already unscrewed most of the screws, so only that one is still in. As you notice probably it is still working because it is now locked and uh, when I switch it off it will take about 5 to 10 minutes to uh, to set the oscillator, to lock the oscillator again, to heat it up. So that big case here is the power supply, it's a 24 volt power supply. It is much too big for this oscillator, the oscillator itself uses about 15 watts or something, but I had it lying around and uh, so I used it. And the oscillator itself is this little box here with the heatsink around. There is a fan on the front side, power supply left, oscillator right. Then a flat cable comes out on the back side carrying all the signals we need and then is a little bit a little interface board here where the flat cable goes uh, connecting to the power to the LEDs and uh, of course the output here makes uh, 10 megahertz precisely 10 point Zero 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 uh, ten uh, to the power of I don't know nine or something zeros. Okay, it's not so spectacular, but what you can do with it, I will show you right now. Well, as I said before, that's the signal from the clock on uh, channel one. And on channel 2, I have to set the time base a little bit faster. Okay, it doesn't work in store mode, it's too fast. That's the signal from the rubidium clock. Uh, can't measure that. Maybe. Okay, now it comes up. Uh, let's see. Uh, cursor reference. Uh, where is it? Oops. It's a little bit stupid on that one. Okay, that's the second one. We have 10 megahertz here. Okay, let's put that in non store mode and in XY mode, which gives us. Something like that. Okay, a uh, Lisa Shu uh, figure works about this. Uh, the name Lisa Shu comes from, from a guy that lived in the 19th century, he was a French physics, physics teacher, physicist, maybe. Okay, um, and it is very simple. You, That's your screen of your. Um, oscilloscope, X mode, Y mode and all you do is you put the sine wave or whatever waveform on the X axis and another uh, sine wave on the Y axis. If they are in the same phase you get a picture like that if they are 90 degrees off you get a picture like that and if they are 
opposite, positive to negative, you will get something like that. You can also read the relations of the frequencies. So if one frequency is uh, twice the first frequency, you get a picture like this, like a, uh, the infinite symbol, which will move probably if the frequencies are not exactly the same. 1 to 3 makes 3 uh, peaks here or 1 to 4 makes 1, 2, 3, 4 peaks and so on. In my case the relations are 100 to 1 so I have 10 MHz for the rubidium clock or rubidium frequency standard and we have 100 kilohertz for the Fawag clock. Uh, if I would count them, I would see here 100 sine wave peaks. And if I make them a little bit broader and a little bit brighter, you can see uh, a small uh, piece of the whole picture. And as you see now, uh, the sine waves are moving to the left or to the right, so I'm more or less on the right spot. All you can see now is thermal drift or uh, from the components that heat up or cool down, depending on the airflow here. Maybe if I wave my hand, no. Ah, if I get my hand close to the oscillator, it will change, okay. So it's very, very sensitive to everything. Let's have a look on this. Okay, turn it a little bit left, a little bit right. Okay, that's the point. I should use a non-metallic screwdriver. I know it would make the task a little bit easier. So, I think that's the best I can get. So, at the moment it stands almost still. No, just when I tell you that it starts to drift, but well, that's the best I can get. It's not possible to go closer to 100 kilohertz than that. And I can tell you, since yesterday, this clock hasn't lost a single second. I have also tried to use my old cheap frequency generator here um, to make a stable example of a nice Lisa Zhu figure, but the best I can get with that one is something like this. Now I try to set it to 2 MHz but the only thing I have is an analog potentiometer to turn. It's not even a 10 turn, it's just a single turn and I think even if I get the frequency it has so much chitter and stuff. Yeah, that's about the best I can get. So we have 10 megahertz on the Y channel and 2 megahertz on the X channel. So it's only 5 to 1. So if you look very quickly you probably see five peaks but well I can see them. I just can guess them one, two, three, four, five, yeah maybe. I don't know know how it looks on the camera, but I think that's not a very stable oscillator here and of course difficult to set up. Okay, that's about it.
Thanks for watching.